For those of you who have applied for a job before, do you know those uh, little computer booth things that sometimes some of these retail shops would have, like Walmart, whatever, and at some point in the uh, uh, filling out the application, they'd always have this like test, the psychological test and stuff. I have always hated that shit right? when I would ever, whenever I had to do that. And so, what happened though? And this, I, this kind of ha- just it just happened. It, I didn't do this on purpose. I didn't seek it out, but it just popped up. Well, I was watching my normal YouTube stuff, and then all of a sudden, I see this one video by this uh, woman, and she was talking about INFJ or what it was like being an INFJ. And so I clicked on it, and I watched it, and I related to uh, to a lot of what she was saying. And I ended up binge-watching a lot of her videos and just trying to figure out whether or not I was or not. Well, the thing is I found out you find this out based on taking a test. And as I said, I hate those psychological tests. So when I heard that you had to go take a test, I was like, fuck that. So what I did is I just watched a lot of INFJ videos and trying to figure out what through that whether I was or not, right? And a lot of it I agreed with, some of it I didn't agree with, so I, I was like, okay, I, I, I may not be straight INFJ, but I'm some, I could be a very much an off branch of it, right? So today, or was, uh, early this morning, because it's like really late in the morning, I'm a night owl, so uh, just about maybe a couple hours ago, um, I took the test, and it said that I was an INFJ uh, T, an I, INFJ T. And then I found out what T meant, and it means turbulence. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, that's not a good sounding name. Like, I'm an INFJ turbulence? Like, and I found out, in a, in a nutshell, what it meant was I'm always an ego improvement. Or, another way to put it, it said that I had, I had no identity. And the truth is, at this point, I know who I am more than I have ever known about who I, who I am as a person. Especially in my early years because without going into all the details again because if you listen to my previous videos you already know I said many times before uh, I lived a very isolated life and so that's kind of why I didn't have an identity because there was no one around including my mother to really teach me or tell me who I should be or what I should be and and so this video I guess in some ways is going to explain to you what is it like what is it like to not have an identity, right? What 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 happens when you start to form one, and how does that all how how's all this work, right? Well, what is it like to not have an identity? The best thing that I was able to think of uh, to describe what it's like it's kind of like it's kind of like if somebody uh, literally doesn't speak your language. Like, say you are someone who only speaks Spanish, right? You come here to America, you only know how to speak Spanish. Let me go the other way around too, but either way you get the point. And then all of a sudden, uh, somebody comes up to you and they start speaking to you. Well, you're going to look at them like you don't have any idea what they're saying. It's just going to like, I I don't know, are they insulting me? Are they giving me a compliment? I have no idea. Like, I don't know what this person's saying, right? Well, then fast forward it, eh, maybe about a year later, you come back and you know perfect English now. Now that person starts talking to you again in the very and starts telling you the very same thing they were telling you the first time. Well, this time now you understand because now you now you just understand what what the English language is like. Well, it's kind of like that. It's just that at first you just are a blank slate and you just have no idea what's going on, and until you start to learn what is going on, uh, then you'll understand. Then the the fog will be re- removed. So. But what can I honestly say, though? Why I say a lot, because you know I am about the New Age community, but why is it that I highly disagree with every New Ager out there that says that the answer is always within you? I'll tell you why that's the case, or that's not the case. It's not the case. The answer, in fact, in most people, though, in most people, the answer is almost never within them, period. And why do I say that? Because from experience, not having... Uh, anyone there to put the answer in, in, or not having anyone to influence me, uh, the answer was never within me. It wasn't until I learned it through observation and, and learning how 
things work that I started to formulate those answers. So they weren't in me automatically. I had to learn them externally. And that's how we are, uh, are uh, as kids. And so you would think that when you would grow up, right, that you would learn some answers. No, what happened is, is that you did two things. You learned answers, but you learned you learned how to you learned what your parents taught you or and you learned a lot of what your environment was and you absorbed that so sometimes when you're asking being asked a question or being asked to figure out what your problem is a lot of times you're just not going to know and so that's why someone like me comes in who has more experience at this sort of thing is able to to use the right words and language and whatever to say hey Maybe this is it, right? And it's only because I've been there. I, I've sort of already, I've already, I already did the observation. I already did the work. So for me, the answer almost always is within me. But that's again, that's only because I already did the work. That doesn't make mean I'm special. It just means I've already done the work. See how that works? <laughs> There are, the truth is, you got, there are people out there who are just not as knowledgeable as other people um, about how they work, about how other people work, and whatever. And so they, that is why they form onto preconceived ideas. They, and then titles and terms, and especially cultural terms, um, are very popular because it's easy to grasp onto that. That's just what people do. Right, and another thing is the answers you receive as somebody that that grows up not having an identity. You you actually learn the truth more than most people because there's no bias there. You know, you're just there learning and absorbing stuff and analyzing. Okay, this happens and that happens, and and the thing is though, when you when when you're like this, you learn. You learn the steps. You learn steps A, B, and C, and D, and therefore you can you can actually see how all this connects, right? When you when you live like me, where you have my my life, my childhood. But what happens with everyone else is that a lot of times people will just go straight to D and not really formulate how they got to A, B, and C. And what happens is when, since I am so used to being able to, to know that there has to be a logical, logical doesn't mean, logical doesn't mean like earth logic or cultural logic. It doesn't mean that. It just means that, okay, I can see from A to B to C how you reach D. That's what I mean by logic. A, B, okay, that makes sense. You went from A to B to C and to D. But a lot of people go straight to D, and then when you, or like me, uh, who, who is so used to, to knowing how you reach that conclusion, start to ask these people, why do you believe what you believe, or why do you think the way you think, and how did you reach to that conclusion, what happens all the time when dealing with others who, who are not like you, is they can't tell you how they reached A, B, and C. Because not reaching A, B, and C is a belief system. You believe it. You don't know it. Because if you knew it, you would know that you would know A, B, and C, and D. Or I should say A, B, and C. And how you reach the D. <laughs> and what they do also is they get offended at you. They get pissed at you because you have to force them to, to realize that they don't know anything. Or they don't know as much as they, at least they don't know as much as they thought they knew. And even if you're not trying to insult them, you really just, in fact, you kind of want to show them even how a how it all works. You want to show them how the how did all this, this connect, you know? And they still don't want to listen to you. Other things is I can learn, uh, or I'm not learn, but uh, other things I remember what it's like to be this way is since we observe a lot, and we learn for somebody that didn't have, a, have an identity because we observed a lot of people, people got would get weirded out and freaked out about us. 
uh, thinking that we're probing into their life and whatnot, and really we're just learning about ourselves. That's all it really is. And especially in the very beginning stages, you don't even know that's what you're doing. You know, I mean, I, when I said I, I had extreme isolation, I wasn't lying. I wasn't, I wasn't just saying stuff just to say stuff. I really, I really was isolated for years. You know, and I, I can remember what that mindset was like, but I'm just like, but the thing is, I would remember <clears throat> remember observing people, and people just would get weirded out. And so I got used to that. I got used to being called all kinds of things, too much, too, 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 too much of everything, right? And you 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 like that. You, it's not like you don't want to freak out people, but you, that's the only way you know how to learn. Since no one around you is teaching you, you get used to having to learn through observation. And that's what I say, you, you get, you know, you get a lot of shit from people for being, you know, too observant of, of their, of their lives, you know, it's like, okay, you understand their, I mean, it's like, you understand their point of view, you know, why, I mean, why no one would want their, someone prying into their, what they're doing. But again, there's still the fact that you, that is how you learn. And, and a lot of it, again, has to do with the kind of a stunted growth. And you can see it everywhere. That's why I'm telling you that all this, all this crap, all this cultural beliefs, all the terms, the titles, the every bit of it, all of it, it's it's useless. In fact, it's more hindering, in my opinion, to to rely so much on labels. And you could all, you know, if you knew about my chart, you go, oh, that's his Aquarius moon. No, it's not. It's called facts. <laughs> It's not about my Aquarius moon. That's why I always say you need to understand more detail of a situation before you can just guess at something. It's not it's not a good thing to just rely on, on titles and shit. But my point is, you, you see this behavior even in adults because even if the culture belief system says that you're supposed to be 18 years old and you're supposed to have everything together, I see so many people, I see... You will only be even real about it. I see ninety percent of people out there that cl claim to be an adult are still children in my eyes, because they just didn't learn from the start. They didn't, you know. And I, you know what I'm saying is like, I mastered this shit, but they they haven't, and so everyone that thinks that they're an adult because they're simply following society's rules on what that means. Um, are really not. <laughs> in most cases, they're really not. Uh, some of them are are just more nicer than others. But either way, every my point is, ev almost everyone around me that I see is is growing, uh, is is still growing. You know, and unfortunately, there are people out there still who uh, are not growing. And the reason why they're not growing is because they feel like they don't need to grow. You know, they, they, they're they very confident that they know everything or that they know enough. They don't need to know anymore. But that's not the case with someone like me because even though I, I'm, I'm even though I've learned a lot already, I know that we never stop learning. I'm still, in other words, forming my own identity. Becoming who I really am. You know? But that's the best example I can get, uh, give as to what it's like to be an INFJT based on what I what I've reached uh, or read on that uh, website. But if you listen to this, thank you for listening. I'll talk to you later.